Hey, Chris Wheatley here from Hot Sub University. Welcome to our second uh, webinar here. We had a webinar a couple of weeks ago and uh, yeah, it was rel relatively successful. So we're uh, we're just trying to get the metrics down how often we're going to do this. So uh, thanks for uh, coming out tonight. I see the 7 or 80 uh, kicking around right now. And uh, we're just going to start off a little bit as we uh, roll into the end of March here and uh, up here in Canada. We're uh, we're liking this because we're finally seeing some nice weather. In fact, last week, man, we got up into, uh, well, I in the U.S., I think what would be about equivalent to about 65 or 67 degrees. So for uh, for East Coast Canada, we were pretty happy about that. We got out and did some camping and some mountain biking and uh, started to feel like summer might be around the corner. So uh, good things happening. COVID, still in the COVID summer, or COVID spring or fall, or oh my God, what is it now? Seems like this whole year has gone by in a blip. And, uh, you know, as we come in, uh, hot tub sales still strong through January and February and increasing through March. Really running into lots of problems uh, inter internationally and nationally with parts supply. Uh, I heard a rumor the other day that Master Spas is about 100 swim spas sitting in their warehouse and they can't ship them because they don't have skirts. And uh, it's not an isolated incident. We're finding lots of guys here getting stuck with uh, product that they can't get out the doors for little parts that are holding them up. So again, if you're out there and you're uh, waiting on a hot tub and people are telling you that there's delays, there really are delays. So um Oh, how often are we going to be doing these? Hard to say. Right now, we're doing them every two weeks. Uh, we might back that down to once a month. We might leave it at two weeks. We'll see how this goes. Um, we got some other delays happening. This uh, thing in the Suez Canal is undoubtedly going to add uh, misery onto the pile um, with that boat, with all those boats being stuck and um, not able to get through the Suez Canal. Um, I can would expect we're going to see some uh, some more delays because a lot of parts, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is coming out of China on 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 lots of brands, especially plastic skirts, things like that. So um, I'm, I'm not sure where uh, you know, where master skirts are that they're waiting for, but uh, you know, it could have something to do with that. So not looking like we're getting much relief here. You know, we expected uh, January and February and March here, maybe to start slowing down again, and we didn't. We just saw really, really big numbers throughout January, February, and March. So um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I got Clark here asking a quick question, so we'll get to you and uh, real quick, and then um, I'm going to talk about a couple quick things here before we take too many more questions. Uh, how often do you test your tub? Uh, once a week, I just did a video. It's up on my YouTube page about how to water test. Um, you know, it's 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 really a simple process, uh, especially if you're using some of the natural products like Spa Marvel Enzyme or mineral salt systems like you know, Aqua Finesse and that kind of stuff. It can really help you make it, your water easy to manage. But the rule of thumb is once a week. Don't micromanage your tub. Uh, one of the problems customers get into is dipping that damn strip every couple of days or every time something's a little bit off and you end up playing yo-yo with your numbers and trying to keep everything good once a week. Uh, do your do your alkalinity, then do your pH. And uh, other than dosing chlorine, which you're going to do every couple of days, um, you know, that's that's really about all you should be doing. So uh, Hot Tub University rating hot tubs, and we've been working on our how we're rating hot tubs because, uh, you know, it seems like most of the rating sites out there when they're talking about hot tubs, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be really a lot of, you know, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of process, shall we say, um, in evaluating and rating hot tubs. Um, so what we've really been doing is we've been looking at exactly – what our metrics are and 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 we've now come up with this calculator that we use and man it, it's it's really nailing down you know what a tub should cost you know because a lot of the things that we look at and what's in the quality of a hot tub build is is re it should be reflected in the cost and lots of times it's not like we you know we we've got tubs up there in the you know seventeen eighteen thousand dollar range which you know, are really mid-end performance tubs um, with fantastic marketing so what we're doing now is how, how we rate tubs at hot tub university is we rate them on um, a whole bunch of different metrics, and they all go into this calculator that crunches the numbers and you know gives us a number for what the tub is. And and these things go from everything to do with the thickness and the weight of the shell, so how much resin they're using in the shell, um, to whether or not it's using a vinyl ester resin you know barrier in the manufacturing process. We look at the plumbing system from everything from the thickness of the plastic on the housings to how the housings attach to shells to how the plumbing attaches to the housings, um, you know, to whether or not they're clamped or glued. Um, um, we look at, uh, you know, so many different aspects of proprietary parts. And then we look at, you know, how fittings attach to shells and how, um, you know, everything, how, how the, how the shells attach, and then the, pl the flow, flow systems. So, you know, how efficient is the flow system? Um, you know, have we got lots of 90 degrees right in front of the pumps intake, that's going to cause a lot of turbulence and, and reduce the life expectancy of the pumps, um, all these things. So we're really trying to refine this down so that we're not just, you know, we're not just going wishy-washy with, oh yeah, this is an A plus and this is a B. We're, we're coming up with a system here that very quickly is going to be out on, uh, on our, on our hot tub university site. That's going to give us a lot clearer, um, numbers. We're really going to 
be able to say this tub is a 7.2 uh, in a build quality standpoint. It's a 3.5 on a, on a part standpoint. It's a 6.2 on a performance standpoint. And those won't just be, you know, pie in the sky bullshit numbers. Those will be real good hard science numbers that we can take to the bank and say, yeah, okay, there's some, you know, there's some real you know, investigation that's gone into this thing. So one of the big things we've really lacked on this year is the ability to get out and about. So, um, you know, I really plan on being down south and, and through Florida this year and talking to dealers and going and looking at tubs and tearing them apart and, you know, getting more data for you. But with COVID, again, it's been really tricky. So we're hoping to get on the road here. It looks like maybe if we're lucky, everybody's going to have immunizations, immunizations in North America here by, you know, maybe April, May. June, <laughs> somewhere in that, it seems to be one of those elastic things. You know, it's going to be this long. Well, no, it's this long. Well, it's this long. So hopefully it won't be too long. And, uh, you know, that's one of the big things in our agenda to uh, to get down there and do some of this stuff. So other than that, what's happening in the hot tub world in general? Prices are high, man. We've seen some insane pricing coming up for available units. Um, and it's a weird one because we're seeing in some cases that, uh, you know, time frames are moving down like West Coast right now, man. We're able to get tubs out there in uh, 8 to 10 weeks, 12 weeks in a lot of cases now. Now, part of that is there's some really super monster dealers out there. In fact, one of the biggest dealers in the world is on the West Coast. And, uh, you know, he seems to be getting product a lot quicker than just about everybody else's. But, you know, we're seeing lead times uh, in, in some cases are, are getting a little bit better. We're seeing guys with a bit of stock on the floor, um, you know, that have, have been ordering for, uh, you know, or, or ordering extra stuff as the season has been going on. So we are finding some units, uh, you know, available out there, but man, we're, we're seeing some crazy pricing sometimes. Uh, we've seen units that normally sell for nine grand that are selling for 15, 16,000 because they're available right away. So, uh, you know, on a private buyer service again, which is, you know, entirely end user funded. So it, it's paid for by you, the buyers, the people that hire us. Um, you know, when you've got something, uh, you're looking for, if you get on that service, we can usually find you some, uh, some tubs that are available quickly. If that's what you're looking for to spend that extra money or uh, you know again we can get you deals and tubs that are uh, coming up so we don't have a whole lot of questions coming down the pipe here today um boy last time i was talking non-stop so i'm not really sure what to say anymore jd's got a beer for me <laughs> thanks brother unfortunately right now i'm on the, the bubbly because uh that's the way it is on sunday evening here in <laughs> eastern canada so one of the uh which is better insulation, open cell or closed cell? What are the pros and cons of adding insulation myself to a poorly insulated unit? Good question. So first of all, closed cell foam, which is typically a polyurethane-based foam, is going to start out with a higher R value than open cell foam. But it's a bit of a it's a, it's a bit of a misinformation sometimes because closed cell foams go through what we call thermal drift. And that's because they use an encapsulating gas that's in the foam that increases the R value. But over time, that gas escapes from the foam and is replaced by regular air. So we can see a, a pretty serious decline on, on, uh, on closed cell foams, uh, or even over a year uh, period. So where they, they, they come out in an R8 or an R6 per inch, um, you know, they, they can, or R5 per inch, they, they can be down to like, they can lose 50, 60% in the first year. So everyone thinks, you know, open, closed cell foam is so much better than open cell foam. And it, it's really not, especially when you're insulating a hot tub. The problem, and, and here's why guys, by the way, use ins, uh, a closed cell foam on an insulation for a hot tub. They put the closed cell foam right up against the shell and they encapsulate all the plumbing in it. And that hope, helps support the plumbing. So, and sometimes it's a Band-Aid. If they're not clamping the plumbing lines, they'll use a, a, a good high-density foam. And that does kind of help. It holds everything together a little bit. They'll also use that for a cheap shell. Now, the problem with it is if you ever get a leak with a closed cell foam, it's bloody impossible to find where the leak's coming from because the closed cell foam won't absorb water. So the leak might be happening here, but by the time it wiggles its way through the foam, it might be coming out on the far end of the hot tub. So sometimes you'll start at the, you know, one corner, you'll end up in the other corner as you trace the water back and rip the foam out. And this stuff's like a bloody rock. When you hear nightmares about hot tub service guys uh, complaining about service in hot tubs uh, that have got full foam, they're talking about those closed cell foams because those foams harden up really hard. That's why they use them to help prop up cheap shells and how to prop up uh, cheaper plumbing systems. So I would definitely go with an open celled foam. The nice thing about an open cell foam, if we do get a leak on a tub with an open celled foam, all you got to do is touch the foam. As soon as you find the wet, wet spot, take a shot back and start scooping the foam out because it's, it, it doesn't harden up. It stays fairly uh, fluffy and soft. Um, in the middle of that wet spot is going to be the leak. Pull that wet foam out, repair the leak, and then you can re-foam it with the same stuff. So my, 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 uh, 
my take on this, I would absolutely prefer to see the more expensive uh, open cell foams uh, in a hot tub than a closed cell foam. Um, if you're going to insulate a poorly uh, insulated tub, what you got to worry about, first of all, is you got to worry about um, motor heat. You, you got to make sure that you've got uh, enough. Hang on a second here. You got to make sure that you got enough uh, fresh air coming in for the motor. So uh, make sure that you leave those that area around the pumps open so that we can get air. And in a lot of cases, if you're going to foam or, or insulate that back section of the tub where those pumps are, you might even want to put a, a vent in there for the summertime use, one low and one high so that the motor heat can get out during the summer. And then in the winter, you can usually just close those vents down so that you, you know, you're not losing heat from the cavity area as much. So yeah, definitely worth doing. Um, one of the ways to do it inexpensively is to get uh, good old attic insulation, you know, four inch fiberglass pink and industrial garbage bags and tuck tape and just make little battens out of it. Don't compress it, you know, just let it fluff up and loft up and kind of wrap it like a Christmas present and just gently tuck it around all the way around the tub. Again, making sure that you don't, you know, lock your equipment in. Um, you'll know, by the way, if, you're, if your pumps are overheating because they won't run the full cycles, they'll start shutting themselves down after a little while. We got uh, Andres uh, Zeskli. Well, that's a heck of a lot of last name. Sorry, sorry if I got that wrong, man. Um, do you have any knowledge of the Australian market, specifically Oasis Spas? I've dabbled in the Australian market a couple of times, but no, I don't know anything specifically about Oasis. But if you post up on the uh, on the questions on the uh, Hot Tub University uh, advice uh, section. Uh, I'll look at that for you, man, because you know, I'm always uh, interested in finding uh, some new products. One thing I do know, and I'm not sure if it's that brand in particular, a lot of stuff out of China, uh, Australia, because it's so close. So I know there's a big player out there that pretends they're a manufacturer. It might, might be Oasis. I'd have to dig up my notes. Um, but when I chased it back far enough, it, it turned out that it was all out of China. Um, and, and man, you know, I, I I got nothing against China. I think Chinese people are wonderful, um, you know, but uh, man, the products coming out of that marketplace uh, in a lot of cases is really, really low end. So you got to be careful. Uh, it's flooding our market, the North American market here. And it's an issue, man. This stuff is a uh, delayed landfill and uh, you know, it's not good for anybody. So uh, JD, Coast Spa Shell's the strongest or is it more of a marketing gimmick? So they use steel in the shell. Whoa! I'll tell you right now, every time I see a steel in a hot tub shell, I just shake my head. It's a marketing gimmick completely. The amount of steel that they use and the size and the caliber of the steel first of all is so small usually it's in you know it's, it's marginal if it's doing anything at all second of all fiberglass is bloody strong i mean what the hell do you need steel for yeah and you know 100 foot yachts out there made with uh, fiber and glass i don't put steel in them um no i'd way rather see a good hand rolled self-supported shell now don't get me wrong coast spas builds a good shell um i've never had i've never heard of really any problems with coast spa shells um but the you know they're no better than any other good high-end shell so anybody that's building a hand rolled self-supported shell with a vinyl ester resin core uh you know it's going to be comparable to that coast shell so you know any of the top guys jacuzzis uh masters uh in fact we got a shell calculator now that we're using and what it does is it takes into account the surface area the weight of all the pieces on the tub the whole weight of the tub and how textured the the shell surface is and uh, by running that through our algorithm it comes up with a number that tells us basically how heavy the shell is based on how much resin it uses and um they come out pretty good i mean they, i think they came out last time we tested them about a 70 out of 100 so about 70 percent um i think the highest one we've ever tested was the uh, lsx uh which i think came in at about a 92 uh but man in my opinion anything above a 60 it's going to be a good, reliable shell. Um, okay, I can pronounce this name real easy. One, two, three, five, T-E-A. <laughs> so, T, how you doing? Okay, uh, do you, the acrylic line shells hold heat better than the rotomolded tubs? I wouldn't think it was going to be a big effector either way. Um, if eh, if anything, the, the rotomolds might. I mean, the thermal plastic, I don't think that, um, I don't think fiberglass is a great insulator. So, uh, and that little acrylic layer, which is the plastic layer on the top, uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to say it's marginal either way. What you really care about is what's on the back side of that. And man, rotomold shells are, are taken off. Eh? The industry has seen a huge growth in the rotationally molded shells. And in my opinion, they are definitely good products. You got to be careful. Some of the cheap rotomolds, they're just not thick enough. And we do see cracking and, and, and breaking down the road the nice thing about those things is they can be welded you can plastic weld them back together uh but i mean still you want to you want a nice thick heavy shell um but man the good ones and and i think the best roto molds out there right now are getaway hot tub man we pulled a pulled one the other day and the, the bloody shell was almost twice as thick as any of the roto molds we've been seeing nordic builds a good shell uh, nordic hot tubs and uh, the dream makers 
build a good shell. So those guys are all doing pretty good. And roto molds, man, not only are they way more environmentally friendly because you can just take that shell and chip it back up and make another shell out of it down the road, uh, which is great. Fiberglass acrylics, they're not. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're going into a landfill at their end of their life cycle. But if they're a good fiberglass acrylic, well, hell, they're lasting 20 years or 30 years. So it's not such a big deal. And one of the big problems I've got with the cheap spas coming into the marketplace is that usually why they're cheap is the shells are thin. And when those shells fail, they become landfill. And I got a big issue with that. Um, so no, uh, rotor molds are good in general. Um, again, stay away. It's like anything, man. Stay away from the cheap stuff at the bottom end and you'll probably be fine. But uh, definitely uh, durable shells, uh, long lasting, non-slip. They used to look like shit, but now they're, they're actually building some good ones. The problem with rotor molds, by the way, is they used to always just be the bottom end of the market. Home Depot's crap and you know, Costco and all, all the mass merchant junk out there. Nobody was building good quality roto molds. Well, now that's changing, man. They're really doing some nice, good quality roto molds with good insulation systems and good plumbing systems and uh, really some sustainable products again. So roto molds, uh, check out Getaway Hot Tubs. It's my number one. Check out Nordic. It's right up there as well. Check out uh, Dream Maker. Uh, again, uh, three good tubs out there for you. August, Rob Robertson. Uh, you're looking at a hot springs pace and like the plug and play option, but after reading on your site, reconsider what we could recommend instead. So listen, hot springs isn't a nightmare brand. Um, you know, I know I got a bit of a bit of a nah, on for hot springs, but more so it's because it's overpriced by a lot based on fancy marketing. And I really just don't like this world where we trick people into believing things are next generation when really they're not. They're just, you know, guys, this is not a rocket science industry, right? Nobody's got any magic bullets. None of the manufacturers out there have anything that's fundamentally next level. So when you get a guy out there that's on the tub for two or three grand more than everybody else's and the jetting on it is really kind of pedestrian you know regular you know and by the way when we talk about performance and jetting on a hot tub tell the salesman to shut up look at the picture little jets are cheap they don't do squat three inch five inch jets you're starting to get into big high flow therapy massage jets that's the performance end of a hot tub no matter what tells you it's the biggest effector the more of those big jets that you get in a hot tub um, and the ability to divert pumps into main seats so you can really flow some water because those are big high flow jets um, that's where you're going to get a better one so if you're looking for 110 volt plug and plays man look at roto molds Honest to God, if you don't want to spend a pile of money, stay away from acrylic tubs because the low end acrylic tubs, those tubs in the six, seven thousand, eight thousand dollar range, that's the junk. You can't build a sustainable fiberglass acrylic shell and put it out into the marketplace for that kind of money. That's where roto molds are perfect. So again, get away hot tubs, um, Nordic spas, Dream Maker spas. Um, again, post your information as to where you are on the discussion form, and uh, my guys will find you a couple of uh, local suppliers that you can have a look at. Um, so. So in the 110 plug and plays, I definitely would be looking at roto molds before I looked at anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. On my Twilight 8.25, I had the ozone hose come off, which was a zip tie fail. Should it be glued and zip tied or zip tied again? Um, excuse me. Hmm, geez. I think I inhaled a big pile of dust or something. So first of all, ozone. It doesn't do anything after a year. Those ozone generators, a year to two max. They're producing no ozone, and all they're doing is, is using a little bit of power. Don't get me wrong. Ozone is good technology, but to do ozone right, like to really do a high-end ozone system that would run your tub almost chemical-free, you'd spend three grand or four grand. You'd need, you'd need to dehumidify the air on the intake. You'd need... Um, to control the formation of nit nitric acid. You'd need primary, secondary, and tertiary absorption tanks. you need ozone off-gas destruct systems. I've built them, man. I built a bespoke one for this guy, um, and it was in his house, and he wanted to go chemical-free. I think by the time we are done, it was two or three grand, um, and it, it worked great. If you think those little $200 ozonators that come in hot tubs are worth anything, forget it. It's, it's all marketing gimmicks. So I would uh, take that little line and plug it, and I would unplug that unit and just leave it there. Don't bother replacing it personally. And again, ozone is chemical reduction. If you want good low chemical hot tubs, go to the aftermarket add-ins. That's the magic, guys. I'm telling you, none of those brands out there, nobody, I don't care any of my favorites, no matter who they are, none of those onboard systems can hold a match to the additives. And it's because ozone and chlorine and bromine and uv and saltwater hot tubs and aop and all of the onboard systems only deal with the easy part of your hot water equation and that's the living organics that are super easy to kill so you know viruses algaes things like that 
The hard part of hot water chemistry is this side, and that's the soaps, the detergents, the lotions, the oils, the makeups, the sunscreens, and none of the onboard systems or chlorine or bromine are very effective at dealing with those. We always got to keep these really high levels on this side to try and deal with this because they're so inefficient at dealing with the lotions and oils. Whereas if you get something like uh, Spa Marble, my favorite, man, I love the shit. I also got to use it in my tub. Um, it breaks down oils and lotions and all that stuff into manageable parts so the rest of your system can deal with it. And honest to God, if you're worried about hot water chemistry, forget the ozone and all that other stuff. Um, get on my site and buy Spa Marvel. If you don't like it, I'll refund it, uh, which I never, ever refund um, because it's super good stuff and works really, really well. So that's it. So I don't know, folks, it's a pretty quiet night out here today. we got 15 people with us. There's not a lot of questions coming down the pipe, so we might uh, just wrap this one up a little bit early unless anyone else is looking for anything. Trying to think of something else I could talk about. Covers. We're going to do a new thing on hot tub covers. So we're, uh, yeah, we're looking around now at all the different covers because, man, one of the biggest problems on hot tubs is covers. Uh, you know, they, they break, they they fail, they absorb water. So we're going to have a series of videos coming out on that. We've also got some uh, some products that we're now selling online. We're super picky about what products we sell online. We don't sell them online just to make money. If you come to me with a product and you Chris, sell this online, unless it's something I really, really like, I'm not going to. But we've got a fantastic hurricane strap um, that I, I did a quick video on. I don't know if the video is live yet, but uh, this thing has got steel in it. Really good uh, quality uh hurricane strap and securely locked like it's air grade aircraft grade aluminum and stainless steel so it's not going to rust um it's a good high security key um you know so it's not going to be your local kid just pop popping it open and being able to get in your hot tub and uh for wind storms and things like that it's really been a great product um coast curve series yeah they're, they're great tubs you know they're nice looking tubs um the only thing i I'm not a big fan of on any of the tubs that have the raised edges on them. So if we're looking at a tub that's flat on the top, the cover drops on, no problem. You pick the cover up for four or 500 bucks anywhere, you know, no specialist stuff. As soon as you got a tub that's got that, that end that swoops up or swoops down, well, now you're looking at custom made covers and now you're looking at a thousand bucks or more for a cover. And again, covers don't last, man. They only last three to five years if you're good to them. Um, so you're into big cost down the road to replace those covers and they really make cover lifters a nightmare. It's so hard to get a cover lifter to hook on because it's got to lift up over that ridged part before it can drop back down. So we've had a real, real pain in the ass with them. So you end up with this, with the cover that's hard to take off. Um, and because you can't use a lifter in a lot of cases, the cover gets damaged a lot more quickly and the covers are super expensive. So I, I love the look, man. I do. I love the, the vanishing edges and the curves and everything. I think it looks great. Um, but you know, there's that other side of the thing that says, uh, you know, what looks good today isn't necessarily going to be in style tomorrow. And sometimes on long-term purchases, you know, buying this something that's really cool and current and looks nice and it's modern now can kind of date itself. You know, in a couple of years from now, that might not be in style anymore. Now you got some goofy, you know, bent up weird thing that we all kind of look at and go, wow, what a weird era we were living in when we had uh, curved edges on our hot tubs. <laughs> but maybe not. You never know. So uh, <clears throat> Andrea is back and she says, Spire Marvel isn't available in Australia. Do you stiff ship to Australia? Uh, Spa Magic, I'm not sure. So try Aqua Finesse. It's a little more expensive. Um, it's a product from Holland originally. So I'm not sure if you'll have that out there either. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, what you want to do is go on to my advice thing on Hot Tub University and uh, request that as well for me. And what I'll do is I'll find out if I can get a contact. I'm sure we could ship it to you. Uh, we'd probably have to ship you like, you know, a case of it because you use four bottles a week. And I think you get 12 bottles in a case. So you'd probably, or um, four bottles a year and you get 12 bottles in a case so you probably have to you know probably have to get a case of it or something but eh, just cover you for the next three years um so i'm sure we can figure out something for you uh, richard barnes sorry it's been asked before but again artesian tub coming in june and concerned about the glue and clamp issue should i be well look at artesian is a good company that makes good hot tubs they're still rated quite high on our scale when I was talking earlier about how we rate hot tubs, um, one of the biggest things we look at in the plumbing system is whether or not there's a clamp on the on the on the plumbing. And by the way, Sure Grip nylon wound flex hose has been around forever, so this isn't new technology. Like this isn't something that everyone's going, "Oh, this is the next generation." This is technology that we've traditionally seen in the past not perform as well as something that's got a mechanical clamp. Now, a lot of times, the argument for using that nylon hose would be that it's a better quality hose, and it is. Um, but you know what? I have never seen a leak in a hose on a hot tub unless it froze and split or a rodent chewed it up. So who gives a shit? You know, the point is the 
failure point on pipe is always connection points. It's where the fitting connects to the shell or it's where the pipe connects to the fitting. That's where we have problems. Um, you know, if you get a, a hose that kinked, it's because it was poorly built. It's because they tried making it bend around in a stupid tight corner. You know, you know it's going to kink before you ever put the side in your hot tub. So frankly, that's not very common. And a leak of an actual piece of pipe is almost unheard of again, unless it's free freeze damage or rodents. It's going to, it's going to take them out of my top group, but I mean, they're still going to be in my top 10 for sure. I mean, Artesian still builds good spots, but is it a big point? I think it is. I think it's a point that is definitely, you know, it's big, man. It's probably one of my top three things. Uh, if you're not clamping the plumbing, you're going to have more leaks. Simple as that. And leaks can be problematic. Not only are they expensive when they happen, but they will deteriorate the, the unit itself if they're, especially if they're a slow leak that's, you know, you just don't notice it and it's just drip, 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 drip. Now you got an area that's wet all the time and man, water is just bad for everything. You know, it just chews the hell out of stuff. So we, you know, it, it, it is a factor for sure. Um, I'm hoping that they start clamping again. Uh, you know, I know they get their knickers in the twist because they, they don't like, you know, I saw something the other day. We have nothing to do with lots of university. Yeah, exactly. Except for probably a, buy a thousand tubs for you every year. So <laughs> whatever, I think that might make me your biggest dealer, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm hoping they start clamping them. Uh, Richard, I'm sure too. Oh, UK, eh? I did, I did a decade down in West Sussex, man. I, I miss it. I, I miss a good Indian dude. Send me a good curry. Well, yeah, I'm dying for a good, like nice shell or man, a vindaloo even maybe even a fowl. I don't know if I can handle a fowl anymore. God damn. I miss a good curry. Um, and I'm not sure, but sometimes the, uh, yeah, I read the statement, me too. Um, sometimes the uh, UK stuff's not quite the same as uh, the Canadian stuff or US stuff for the specifications. Um, so I'm not 100% sure clued up on it. Um, and again, guys, look, there's a lot of things that come into evaluating how good a hot tub is. And Artesian is still a good hot tub. We're still going to recommend Artesian. We're still going to, you know, sell Artesian. Um, you know, the only difference is if we're comparing a tub uh, – to an artesian and the artesian's got a good hand rolled shell and it's got a good insulation and it's got this good parts and it's got good performance um but they don't clamp their plumbing and they do clamp their plumbing and we're gonna push the guy that's clamped his plumbing because it's simply gonna make a better product for you so i guess that's pretty much all i got to say on that one i'm kind of beating that one to death but you know i was kind of be honest with you man i was, I was I kind of they kind of got me right here when they did that i was like oh man guys you know you had it all go you had it all going on um but anyway is what it is. Life moves on. So speaking of moving on, so slow one tonight, guys. Come on, you got some more questions here for me, or are you gonna let me go have a beer early tonight? It is Sunday. Um, thanks for your comments. Carrie, Carrie's on me. Deal. Beer's on me. Carrie's on you. Um, what else were we gonna talk about today? We got some dead air stuff here. Let's see. We talked about the Suez Canal delaying stuff again. Um, Hot tub shells. Ah, jets. Yeah, so you know how we were talking about uh, one of the things I love, by the way, about Artesian um, is the compression fit jetting system that they're using, uh, which is from CMP. And I know they got a fancy name they call it. Um, basically, here's the deal. If you look back at how shell fittings attach to SQR, that's what it is, CMP, SQR uh, Compression Fit Jet with ProLock. Anyway, fancy name for a great concept. So here's what happens. By the way, one of the number one leaks on a hot tub, especially as they get older, is where the fitting attaches to the shell of the hot tub. Because here's how it's done. And almost everybody, by the way, does it this way still. They silicone the inside of the fitting and a guy gets in the tub and he puts it in the hole and he holds it. And a guy goes around the other side and he silicones the other side of it and he puts a retaining nut on. He tightens the retaining nut. And then what he's supposed to do is put a torque wrench on and torque it to a setting. Now, the truth is most of them aren't torqued. And they're, most aren't torqued because you simply can't get a torque wrench in there on it. You know, there's not enough room. It's too crowded in there. So usually they're not torqued and usually they're just done up by hand. And you've got so many things that can fail here. If the guy didn't get the silicone quite right, if the guy didn't get the tension quite right on the nut on the back, these, and these are the insidious leaks because these are the weepers, the drippers, the little tiny long-term ones that are always just losing a little bit of water because you got to think that once that fitting is attached to a shell, a jet goes into that fitting and the jet threads in or click locks in. Okay. So there's always this click, click, turn, turn, 
people taking them out every year to clean them out and stuff like that. There's always this movement. As it gets older and older and older, as soon as you actually move it and the, sh the fitting moves, then it breaks the silicone away from the shell. So there's just so many failure points here. There's so many places that this can go wrong. And traditionally, it's been a big deal. Like my son refurbishes hot tubs. Uh, he buys hot tubs, uh, he takes them into a center, and he rips them apart, and he refurbishes them. His number one complaint is uh, jet fitting uh, interface, where that jet housing attaches to the shell. So the CMP system, um, and they're using them on masters now, they're using them on uh, Tizians now, they're using them on, mm, God, I'm not sure who else is using them for sure right now. Oh, possibly. Uh, anyway, I'll have to check the list, but, and, and there's a couple other big OEMs that are in, in trials with it right now. They use this uh, a jet, real nice, heavy, thick plastic uh, jet housing. And this the shell that they use, the, uh, the big grommet is a my God, it's like a quarter inch thick, this rubberized grommet. And I, and I say rubberized, it's not. It's some tech, you know, sealant thing that they use in the aerospace industry. Apparently, it's um, inert, so it doesn't react with anything. And what they do is they simply cut the hole to a really precise size, and then they punch the jet in to the hole. Simple as that. Now, one of the things with the old system, if that jet wasn't married to the shell perfectly, if they didn't back, they used to have to back grind it so it was nice and flat so where the nut would go on, everything would be true and flat because if it was kinked a little bit, it would leak. Well, these things don't care. If they're not quite straight in the hole, it doesn't matter. The bloody, the bloody seal's about that wide and about that thick. So if it's in, even if it's crooked a little bit, it seals. If somebody moves it a little bit, it stays sealed. Um, they're idiot proof. Uh, the, the failure rate has gone down like like ninety percent or something. I mean, we've been following this for for five years now since they've been putting them in tubs, and everybody we talk to that's using the system is just going absolutely. This is a uh, this is a uh, the way to go. So one of the things we're really liking is that, and that's on our TC and spots. So that's a big plus for them there because yeah, okay, maybe the plumbing uh, not clamping is not the best thing they ever did, but uh, you know that compression fit system that they use is fantastic. Uh, Bo Ross is Max Fee's, you know, the Vita Spa line. I heard a rumor, but I do not know for sure. Um, you know, Max I'm kind of it's LPI Industries. No, it's not. Is it LPI? Oh my God, I get them all confused nowadays. So Max Vita, Cal California Cooperage, um, yeah, there's a bunch of them there, and I think they're all built down in Tennessee somewhere. Kind of middle of the road stuff, anyways, guys. Honestly, if you look at it, their 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 shell rates very low on our scale. Some some are, I think the last time we did one was about a three and a half, uh, thirty five out of a hundred. Um, so you know, mass merchant kind of quality shell, cradle supported, uh, low end insulation, mylar, whoo, space mylar. Um, so not a very high R value insulation system. No clamps on the plumbing, um, and not even using sure grip, like just using nylon. Which fine, I don't care what kind of hose you're using if you're clamping it, but man, to use a nylon hose on a barbed fitting and then not clamp it, uh, yeah, it's just not there. So I'm not sure whether they're phasing out the line or not, but you know, frankly, if you're going to buy it, if you're looking at one of those tubs, go buy Home Depot. Simple as that. You're probably going to buy the, just the same kind of quality tub with less money, and uh, at least you'll have a big guy you can yell at if it uh, if it all goes wrong. So, other than that. I don't know what else to say here, folks. Um, we're a little quieter today than we were the other day. So, uh, you know, I think we went an hour the other day. looks like we're going to dust off here right around half an hour. Anyone else got anything you want to say? Say it now. Other than that, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for showing up for you, those of you that did. Feel free to reach out if you've got any questions about specifics in your market area, anything else that you need like that. And uh, stay tuned. We should be doing this in another two weeks as, uh, as well. And, of course, we're always available for comments, consults, any of that kind of stuff. Private buyer service, if you're buying a hot tub, man, private buyer service is 100% consumer supported. In other words, we don't take money from corporations. We don't take money from manufacturers, retailers, distributors, anything for the service. The service is about buying hot tubs for you you pay us we work for you we work with closely with retailers and manufacturers um but uh, it's all about you so i um, mean it's a great product we've been doing tons of them like God, i think we did 20 last week uh water additives for plastics health yes um Man, Spa Marvel. <laughs> I know I go on about this shit. One of the things about Spa Marvel that uh, I never mention that often, it actually gives you a lifetime guarantee on your jets if you use it from new as directed. That's a big one, man, because you can spend a couple of grand on jets. And I've seen jets on eight, eight-year-old tubs or five-year-old tubs, especially if the water chemistry has been really bad, where they're starting to break and get brittle and you're having to replace the jets. Um, this stuff is actively good for the plastic and so much so that Spa Marvel warranties the jets in your hot tub for life. So yeah, um, not only is it super low chemical and you know everything else, just easy to manage your water and it extends the water's life. One of the big things about it is it does... Uh, 
it does uh, protect the plastic a lot. So calcium is the other one. And make sure you harden your water up. I know that sounds batshit crazy. Everyone's always like, soft water, soft water. Soft water is super aggressive. Water wants to naturally balance its hardness level out to somewhere in that 150 range. And if it's too low, what it's going to do is it's going to steal calcium from the tub, uh, plastic parts, and it can make them brittle over time. So, um, yeah, definitely make sure you're adding your cal boost and getting your calcium when you first fill your tub up, get your calcium into that okay range. And then, yeah, the additives like Spa Marvel will help you a lot with that. And that looks like a wrap, folks. So, uh, listen, thanks a lot for coming out today. And, uh, again, feel free to post. Feel free to contact us if you got any uh, questions you need answered or any help purchasing a tub in your local area. And other than that, Chris Wheatley from Hot Tub University. Happy hot tubbing, folks. <laughs>